All right, welcome back. And now we're gonna finish up the section on the precise definition of a limit with dealing with infinite limits. Okay, so I'm gonna introduce the definition. I'm not gonna do any examples, but definitely practice using this definition, understand this definition. Again, very similar to the other epsilon delta uh, definitions. We have an intuitive, uh, you should have a very good intuitive understanding of what it means to have an infinite limit. Now we're just gonna basically put the precise language to it um, in mathematics. Okay, so here's the definition. It says let, so we're gonna deal with the positive and negative infinite limits. Okay, so the first one says let f of x be defined for all x not equal to a in an open interval containing A. So again, very similar language to when we were talking about informal definitions. Then, now here's where it gets formal. Then we have the infinite limit, limit of x, as x approaches A of f of x equals positive infinity if for every m greater than zero, so m is some real number, for all m greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero such that if the distance from x to a is less than delta. So basically, as we're getting closer and closer to delta, or excuse me, as x gets closer and closer to a, right? Then f, the value of the function, is going to be greater than m. What does that mean? It seems that no matter what m we choose, right? No matter what real number we choose, what this is saying is that there's going to exist a delta greater than zero that if the distance is less than delta, the value of the function is going to be greater than m, which means it's going up without bound. This is saying that this function, as it gets closer and closer, as x gets closer and closer to a, is increasing without bound. Okay, now, similarly, it says, let if, if we say for the for negative function, negative infinity, let f of x be defined for all x not equal to a in an open interval containing a, oops, containing a, then we have a negative infinite limit, the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to negative infinity, if for all m greater than zero, there exists delta greater than zero such that if this is true, then f of x will be less than negative m. So what is this saying? Again, very similar to this one. This is saying as, as for any m real value m we choose, any positive real m, there exists a delta such that if this is true, if we are, with, if we are less than delta away from a, then f of x will actually be less than negative m. So this is saying that this is going down or decreasing without bound. Okay? That's it. Again, practice these, practice these, practice these. You will see these on an exam. Okay? Um, so make sure you practice your delta epsilon proofs. It is vital that you're able to do these. Okay, you may not understand them right away. You may not understand them even for the exam, but you must be able to get do them for the exam. The understanding uh, may come later. Okay, I'm going to leave you with a, a truth that is absolutely true for everyone. Everyone hits a wall when it comes to their learning, it's even in mathematics. Okay, and what I know to be true is that even if you don't understand something today, or tomorrow or the next day it will make sense later on okay your brain is so powerful that it will continue to process and work on the stuff that even the stuff that you don't understand even afterwards okay um, there's an old adage and I believe this is absolutely true is when the student is ready the teacher will appear and one part of that that I've, I've learned is that hey 
your brain may be trying to process things you don't understand. Delta Epsilon proofs are difficult for a lot of students to understand and even to apply. But practice them so that one, you, you do well on the exam and you get these correct on the exam, okay? First and foremost, obviously, that's what we want to do, right? You want to do well on the exam. These are going to be on the exam, so you're going to need to make sure you practice these. But even if you don't understand them and you do well on the exam and you just do it to get later on, maybe years later on, you come back to this material, let's say uh, in a class or something like that, maybe you, maybe you are t retaking calculus later on or maybe you're going on a different path and you, and you have to refresh your memory. You'll find that a lot of cases when you come back to it, all of a sudden, it makes sense. Didn't make sense then, but it makes sense now, okay? I've gone through that many, many, many times throughout my academic career, my professional career. Um, your brain is powerful, and it continues to work on problems even when you're not consciously thinking about them. And that is the amazing thing about our brain. Okay, so again, talk to you later.